I think the single most important experience for me throughout this past year was this was the exercise simple and yet not so simple of engaging in this history with other people yes with the 16 people on the committee for starters um, thoughtful sincere um, engaged professionals students staff members but then more broadly uh, whether it was the engagement in the fall that was specifically oriented on the name of the building and students, uh, students, staff members, the administration, um, the, uh, watching them all come together to seriously engage in this issue and to figure out A, what happened and B, what the implications are. But then in the spring, watching it develop and grow and become that much stronger, uh, we had no idea in September, say, you know, what were the ways that we would try to coax a conversation in, at, at the university? We had some very broad ideas, but um, finally in April, it comes together in more than a week of programs, 15 programs that hundreds of people attended, the, uh, the Emancipation Day Symposium. 12 days, 15 events, hundreds of people attending, engaging, participating, every kind of person that would consider him or herself part of our community, students, undergraduates and graduates, alumni from all of our schools, faculty from many of our departments, uh, administration and staff, engaged in a set of programs that also had a variety that allowed for different kinds of engagement, everything from uh, you know, serious, uh, scholarly lectures in the economic history of the early 19th century to master classes in African dance. Um, and to, to see that rich kind, that rich range of engagement in this, pro in this problem, well, at the end of the day, the, the credit for that, the responsibility for that lies with these members of the community. Um, with the, a sincerity and a, and a willingness to engage that cuts across our, our community at so many levels. Part of the reason that this history is known and knowable is because you have so many generations of Jesuits who have worked to make sure that it can be knowable. The promising thing about this particular moment is how a broader community is taking this on for their own and not just leaving it for the Jesuits to think their way through and, and do the scholarship on. In terms of Jesuit values, the Jesuit values give us a concrete standard by which to evaluate the situation and to learn something from it. How do we, how do we morally assess what happened? Well, part of that is because of the very values that they contradict so blatantly. And I think that's worked very much to our advantage as we've worked our way through this in the past year. One is that the Georgetown community and all of its diversity and with all of its range of talents and interests and spanning the generations that our community as a community can say soberly and sincerely, this is part of our history and we take responsibility for it. We recognize that part of our identity, to the extent that our identity as Hoyas is informed by a history that we have and we share, that we adopt, whether it's when we're 18 and we come as freshmen, or in our 30s and we come as faculty members, or at uh, any range of ages when we come as uh, staff or join the administration, that as we join that community, we appreciate that part of our history is this history of slaveholding and the slave trade, and that that opens our eyes to broader 
social concerns and social issues that are still nationwide unhealed. I also hope that by looking at this particularly poignant and sad history, that we use that to help acquire for ourselves tools of moral analysis that we can apply to ourselves today. My ultimate conviction lies that history matters up to the present and into the future. There's a history that has implications for the present, and there are lessons to be learned from these historical episodes that allow us to be self-critical in hopefully productive and fruitful ways.